concavity. When we talk about the concavity of a function, what we're really talking about is the rate of change of nonlinear functions. Now, don't confuse rate of change with slope. Take a look at this function. You can tell that as we move from left to right on the function, the function is increasing. So when we look at any two points, we can look at a rate of change between those two points. But this is a nonlinear function. As we move further and further from the left to the right, that ratio is changing. In both of these triangles that I've drawn to illustrate a rate of change, they both have approximately the same change in x. But notice the change in y from the first pair of points to the second pair of points has changed drastically. This type of <clears throat> change in the average rate of change is described by concavity. So, I have a function that's increasing, but my rate of change is decreasing. We call this concave down. So, I have an average rate of change here. I'll call this my average rate of change 1. And an average rate of change here. If, as I move from left to right, my average rate of change is bigger on the left than it is on the right, we can describe the situation as concave down. Here we are given another function. And again, the average rate of change is changing. If I look at this first point here, notice delta y is a negative value. It's not necessarily to, to describe it with a negative symbol in front. I'm just putting there to illustrate that this is a negative value. Over, if I go the same distance in x, at a second pair of points, my delta y is even more negative. Again, I have two average rate of changes, the first one and the second one. Now, I realize that the absolute value of delta y is a larger number. However, what you have to recognize is that the average rate of change of the first pair of points is bigger than the average rate of change of the second pair of points as you move from left to right. This number is bigger. The average rate of change is a bigger number for this pair of points than for this pair. Remember, you're dealing with negative numbers. If you owe $2 on your bank account versus owing $20 on your bank account, then you would have more in your bank account here at a negative $2 than you would if you had negative 20 in your bank account. So, an easy way to help you remember this is if you are anywhere on a graph, anywhere at all, and the graph appears to be part of a frown. So whether you're increasing on a graph or decreasing, if you are on part of it that looks like a graph that is a, a frown, you are concave down. So a little 
thing to help you remember this is when you're concave down, you want to frown. We're going to now examine a different situation. In these picture here of this function, we see two sets of points being represented and their average represented uh, average rate of change being represented graphically. As we move from left to right on this graph, what you'll notice is the average rate of change of the first pair of points is smaller than the average rate of change of the second pair of points. Whenever we have a situation as you move from left to right that the average rate of change of any pair of points is getting larger, we call that situation concave up. So again, as you move from left to right, the average rate of change is getting larger. Take a look at the second graph. For this function, I have a function that is decreasing, which means my output is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So therefore, all of my average rate of changes are negative. But we are going to examine the first average rate of change and the second average rate of change. Because both of them are negative, we're not thinking about this in terms of steepness, but in terms of numerical value. The first average rate of change is a very large negative number. Oops, that's the first one. It is smaller than the second average rate of change because to go from a large negative number to a small negative number, I would have to add to the first average rate of change. If I'm adding to it, I'm making it bigger. So in this situation, my function is decreasing, but my function is concave up. An easy way to help you remember this situation is any time that you are looking at a graph, whether the graph is decreasing or increasing, if that graph looks like it's part of a smile, then you are concave up. So when you're filling up, you smile. The important thing to remember when you're talking about concavity is concavity is very different than describing the rate of change. When we're looking at a rate of change, what we're looking at whether the function is increasing or decreasing. When we're talking about concavity, what we're talking about is are we adding to the rate of change, concave up? Are we removing from the rate of change, concave down? of course always as we're moving from left to right. So I'm going to do two things. The first thing I'm going to do is talk about concavity and I'm going to describe the intervals of when this function is concave up. Now what I told you before is any place that the graph looks like it's part of a smile it is concave up. Any place that the graph looks like it's part of a frown it is concave down. So clearly, this part is smiling, this part is frowning. Somewhere between the frown and the smile, and this is just an approximation for right now, we can split the graph. So over here it appears like it's frowning, over here it looks like it's smiling. So we basically want to put it as close as you can to that point where it looks like that transition occurs. So the concavity. If I look over here, everything to the left then is part of a frown. It is concave down. And it's concave down from negative infinity to negative 2. Over here, it looks like it's part of a smile. So in this area, we say it's concave up. 
from negative 2 to positive infinity. Again, do not confuse concavity with rate of change. They tell us something very different. Now, let's talk about our rate of change. For a nonlinear function, we generally refer to this as our instantaneous rate of change. So, when we talk about my instantaneous rate of change, or if I say that the function is increasing, I'm talking about the intervals where my function is getting larger. So in this case, as I move from left to right, my function is going up until I get to here. Then it begins to go down until I get to here. Then it goes back up. So my function is increasing from negative infinity to negative 4. We're always describing this with x values and only with x values. My function begins to increase again at negative 1. And it increases forever. So this is my interval where my function is increasing. And I put a u here to show that both this portion of the graph is increasing as well as this portion. Now we're going to talk about when the function is decreasing. Decreasing means my instant rate, instantaneous rate of change is going down. So as I move from left to right, my function is dropping in y values, but we describe when that is happening with the x values. So that is happening when x is negative 4, through when x is negative 1. <clears throat> so the big idea here is do not confuse concavity changing the rate of change versus increasing or decreasing. Two separate concepts. Now I'd like to talk about a possible word problem, an application. We're going to look at a graph of a man who is traveling towards his house. So he is approximately a few miles from his house and begins his journey home by slowly walking. After a little bit, he begins to walk faster and faster. Eventually, he begins to jog. And then after a while, he begins to run until he finally gets home we're going to make a graph of this situation. Again, the man is a few miles away from home and begins to walk slowly. So he has some distance to his house. That distance is beginning to decrease slowly at first. But then he begins to walk faster and faster, which means his, his distance is going to start dropping quicker. He begins to jog and then he begins to run until he gets home, always getting faster and faster. In this situation, from the time he begins his trip until the time he gets home, his distance is decreasing. So the distance is decreasing. on the whole time interval. He is starting to go faster and faster and faster, which means for this situation, his situation is concave down because it's part of a frown. Here's another possible situation. We look at a graph of a population. Let's say you put a couple of rabbits on an island. The population of those rabbits will begin to increase at first. In fact, 
a population of rabbits almost appears to be an exponential function. The problem is your island is only so big, so as the population gets larger and larger, there becomes less resources for that population on the island. Eventually, that population must slow down and eventually will reach the most amount of rabbits that can be held on the island. Let's take a look at what that graph looks like. So, our population starts with a few rabbits, and then it begins to increase. And at first, they begin to multiply faster and faster and faster. But eventually, there's only so much space on the island that population's increase must start to slow down. And eventually, you reach the maximum amount that can be on the island. In this case, it's called the carrying capacity of the island. So notice, in the first portion of the graph, you are increasing at an increasing rate. So over here it's concave up, clearly over here it is concave down. But somewhere in between that concave up and concave down, we transition. And again, we're just estimating where that occurs, roughly about here. So, up until this point in time, my function is increasing at a increasing rate, or it is increasing and concave up, because I am adding more and more to my rate of change. After this point in time, from here on further, my function is still increasing. I'm getting more and more rabbits but I am increasing at a decreasing rate. My function is concave down. I have a positive rate of change, but I am removing from that positive rate of change. So eventually, my population will level off. So the function is increasing over the full time interval graphed. First at an increasing rate, and then at a decreasing rate. First it's concave up, and then it is concave down.